start recording. Right, so good evening, everyone. Uh, so glad you, you could attend to find out more about tomorrow's Right for Rights. That is a bit of a mouthful, so I have to say it two or three times in this introduction, and I may at least once get it mixed up. Um, I'd like to begin, though, by acknowledging that for, I guess, for nearly everyone here, uh, we are on the unceded and ancestral land of the Musqueam Band uh, the, and the uh, Squamish and Tsleil-Waututh Nations. We commit to work actively as an organization in whatever way to bring about a just and honorable reckoning with indigenous peoples and to live in a respectful relationship with them and with this land we call our home. For some years, uh, UCV has been actively engaged with an Amnesty International writing group that used to meet uh, monthly in the Hewitt Hall. And we all fervently hope that once we get back to normal, whatever that is, that the, that group will uh, continue again. Also for many years, uh, members of the congregation would meet on the, after the Sunday service nearest to December 10th, uh, to write letters for Right for Rights. And, um, and Yvonne was always a leading uh, part of that uh, action. Um, and sometimes we got a good turnout and sometimes not so good, but uh, at least uh, we've uh, tried and hopefully we'll get back to doing that again when we have face-to-face -face services. So um, this evening uh, we have Yvonne, uh, Yvonne Marcus, for those who may not know her, <laughs> I think we all do, uh, is uh, she's going to explain more about the campaign and give us lots of tips about how to uh, write letters. Um, Yvonne's well known to the congregation and um, an active member of the church and of many other activist groups. I'm always bumping into her on the, <laughs> when I used to go to demos, I haven't been to many lately, I'm afraid. Uh, she's been involved with Am in Amnesty International for, for many years. So without, um, without further ado, I'll like to hand it over to Yvonne, but first uh, Lynn's going to explain how the questions and answers se session will work. Thank you. And there I was really good, I muted, <laughs> but then forgot that I was muted. Uh, thank you, Melody. Um, so I'm, I'll check whether everybody's familiar with, um, you know, opening the participant screen and the chat screen. The icons are at the bottom there for you. And what we do is use both. We use the uh, blue hand. You're welcome to raise a blue hand if you'd like to ask a question or make a comment or say something. And you're also welcome uh, to put comments and questions in the chat. And I'm thinking everybody's familiar with that. Does anybody have a question about it? Yes, Hanno. You're muted. You need to. I, I please could you tell me how can I make it that it goes? I always type something in and it doesn't leave. Try one right now for us. If you go to the underneath, it says everyone, the little blue. Yes, I will do that. And then I will wait. Type a little message, say hi. I have now just said hello, and now what do I do? Press enter or return. Did it come? No. Whatever you usually do to uh, enter or return. How shall I click? Or I, there is nowhere a sign where you click? No, it's on your keyboard. On your keyboard, usually oh. on the middle of the right-hand side, it will say either return or enter. Do you see Yeah, well, key? that's what I clicked. I do it again. Huh. Did you get a hello? Nope. I don't know what. So well, that always happens. Yeah. And I used to be able to send them uh, at the beginning. Yeah. What I'm going to suggest, Hanno, so for this, for today, use the blue hand if you'd like to say something or ask something. Okay. Do the blue hand. And sometime in between our meetings, I'll get on the call with you and see if we can figure it out. Thank you. Okay. Okay. And Catherine? Where is the blue hand? If you've opened your participant and chat screens over on the right. Oh, yes. Side, uh -huh. we'll see oh, I see. Got it. Got it. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah, if you click mm -hmm. it. Yeah. And Catherine, are you letting somebody in? 
Looks like Mary Beam's been waiting for a little while there. Okay, well, if that's all good, let's, uh, let's let Yvonne take it away. Um, excuse, excuse me, Lynn, I can't see Mary Beam. I just, I, I just, I let, I just let her in. Okay. Hello. Hi, Mary. Hi. Hi, Mary. We're just getting started. Yvonne's just about to begin her presentation. Great. Well, welcome, everyone. I was going to start by just mentioning how I became interested in, in, in Amnesty International. So I wrote some things down. So I'll be trying to look at you most of the time, but I'll be looking down at my paper, too. So human rights are often taken for granted until you read about or personally experience their loss. I would read about cases of unjust imprisonment and torture in all parts of the world, and I would feel extreme sadness and outrage. I didn't know what to do to help, and I didn't know if anything could be done, because as an individual, how could I influence the actions of a foreign power? About 30 years ago, I heard about Amnesty International from a friend who was a physician, and she's not from Canada, she's from another country, but she had spent time documenting mistreatment in foreign prisons. You know, she would take her vacation and go <laughs> to volunteer for Amnesty. Uh, more recently, I became aware of human rights violations here in Canada. Um, in 2013, I participated in the Walk for Reconciliation. And that was my real introduction to really the, the plight of First Nations. I must say I was quite ignorant. I moved from the United States about 20 years ago and not that the there aren't a lot of abuses there in the US too, but really 2013 is when I, you know, you know, due to the bravery and willingness of indigenous people to engage with settler community, I became aware of what they'd been dealing with for years and years. And then, um, you know, more recently, the, the 2018 arrests at the Trans Mountain uh, Pipeline facilities of over 200 activists by RCMP has given me the chance to witness court proceedings, you know, talk to those who have spent time in prison. And it's been eye opening to see the injustice of the justice system. You know, and it's definitely true that human rights are not guaranteed. And we should not take them for granted because they can be taken away at any moment. You know, we need to be continuously advocating, organizing, and speaking out in order to protect our rights. So when I first heard about AMC International, I became a donor, but I did not actually start writing letters until many years later. You know, I had planned to become a regular letter writer, but I could never quite get around to organizing, getting all the information I needed and figuring out what to say, who to write to, what to say. So I was very happy when Rights for Rights was organized on a yearly basis. And I realized that I felt like I could have some power, some influence, because I'd be, I could influence government because I was part of a large team of global citizens who were all writing at the same time to exert public pressure. And that you know, made me feel like, well, this has made it so easy. I really got to start participating now. I don't have any, any excuse. So um, Amnesty chooses 10 cases every year and provides background information and the addresses for these different cases so that people can easily write letters for them. Now I think I'd like to share my screen and I'm gonna talk a little bit about how Write for Rights works. So here, let's see, let me know if, can everybody see a screen that says how Write for Rights works at the top? I don't yes. Know, everybody, everybody's muted. Yes. So good, good. Yes. Uh, Wonderful, thank you. So basically starting here, this is a magnifying glass. The, you know, the idea here is this is step one. So Amnesty offices around the world, um, Amnesty has offices around the world and so they're constantly hearing about human rights violations. They select cases that they believe are most likely to be influenced by public exposure. Some of the cases have received local attention like in the media but Amnesty chooses cases that they believe that this decision makers are more likely to respond to global pressure. So basically Amnesty selects these cases and then they inform all their members worldwide. So that's what this 
is trying to show. They, they pick these 10 cases and then they distribute the same information to everybody, all their members around the world, which would include me and, and now you will be on their mailing list if you're taking their online actions. And then the, the members organize events. So this, this is what we're doing right now. Basically we're organized, we, you were part of a letter writing event. And there are, um, at these events, two types of letters are written. One type of letter is to decision makers. And that's, I guess, seems straightforward in that you're writing to the president of a country or the attorney general to say, you know, I want you to release this, this prisoner. The other letters that are written are letters of support. Now these letters can be written to people that are in prison. In some cases, they'll let mail go through or a person could be under threat of violence or it could also be to the family members of those who were um, in prison or under threat. So these letters are the, written um, in, so these are the two types of, of letters. I, I should have mentioned that. So you, you're right, this is representing a government official. And then these are representing the person who's been locked up. That's the concept there. So all these letters are then written between the months of October to January. But most of the letter writing takes place on December 10th, which is tomorrow. Um, because that's International Human Rights Day, which marks the anniversary of the UN Declaration of Human Rights, which was ratified in 1948. So after receiving all of these thousands and thousands of letters from around the world, some decision makers respond favorably and they actually release the, the prisoners. So I will show you some success stories here and maybe some of these will will be familiar. Now this um, was from the 2015 Right for Rights, which was the, the first one we did it, at least I organized it at, at UCB. So I, I think Hanno, you were there. I'm not sure who else wrote for, for this person, but I remember writing for her and she was, was there. Yeah, great. And, and she was in prison for four years and after being tortured, you know, in forced confession, and then receiving, it says 300,000 actions were taken on her case by writing to the Mexican government to drop the charges and release her. Um, this activism helped shift public opinion and media coverage and this pressured them to actually release her in, in quite a short amount of time in this case, it was just a few months. But I think, so, so that's one type of letter to the decision maker, but also, also people wrote directly to her and here's a quote from her, when I received all these letters saying that I'm not alone, it made me feel great. And I think, yes, it's true, I'm not alone. They really are supporting me. And then the last thing is once someone's released, if you were on Amnesty's letter writing list, you will then get an email saying, this person was released. And I get quite a few of those you know, over the years and it's an amazing feeling. It's just really, really feels good to think, Wow, I mean, it was just one little action, but it actually did something. And so that to me is the whole reason I write letters, right? And I'm, I'm sure that's the same reason everybody <laughs> writes letters. So here's another case. And I remember writing uh, for this case also, this was Albert Woodfox, who was in solitary confinement for 44 years. And I remember thinking, wow, he's in the US and that's you know, where I'm originally from. And, you know, you always think of, uh, you know, so obviously lots of human rights abuses in North America. And he says, I can't emphasize enough how important getting letters from people around the world is. It gave me a sense of worth. It gave me strength, convinced me that what I was doing was right. And so if you want, I mean, there's actually a, a link here. I don't know if it's you know, if, if it's probably clickable in your screen too, if you ever wanted to click on that, you could go to 15 cases, success stories that exist on the Amnesty blog there. Um, but I put that link in the web page for this event. So it's on the Unitarian website. So I can always tell you how to get to it. So now what I'm gonna do is actually go through each case for this, the 10 cases and describe what's, um, what they are all about. So the first case is for um, is about Khalid Drareni. He's a journalist 
who shares a, a common dream of freedom and equality with many Algerians. And people took to the streets in February of last year to demand these principles of, of wanting equality and Khalid joined in. On March 27th of this year, Khalid was arrested while covering a demonstration. He was charged with inciting an unarmed gathering, even though he was simply doing his job as a, a journalist. He was sentenced in August to two years in prison. So the two actions you can take are to write to the president of Algeria calling for his re release, or you could write to Khalid and encourage him and let him know you're thinking about him because they do accept letters at the prison where he's kept. So the next um, case is um, Jermaine uh, Rakuki. He's um, in Burundi and he and his wife are both workers for NGOs. In July of 2017, dozens of members of security forces um, had come to their compound and interrogated the people, you know, unannounced, of course. They arrested Jermaine and transferred him to a prison in northern Burundi, where he is today. Um, and then on, um, this is this is actually two, two years ago now, April 26, 2018, Jermaine was found guilty on many fake charges, including rebellion, threatening the state security. His previous association with a group called Action by Christians for the Abolition of Torture was used against him. Um, so he, uh, so you could write to the president of Burundi to call for his release, or you could write to um, Jermaine or his wife, um, Emmeline, um, to encourage them and let them know you're thinking about them. And there are email addresses for, some, for, for almost all of these, which I'll go over later. So the next case is in Chile, and um, so bro protests broke out across Chile in 2019 over rising prices and inequality. Um, Gustavo Gatica, a student in Santiago, was one of thousands who took to the streets. Um, on November 8th, police loaded their shotguns with rubber and metal ammunition and fired indiscriminately into crowds of demonstrators. Gustavo was hit in both eyes and permanently blinded. An internal investigation absolved the police of any responsibility and even suggested that the demonstrators injured Gustavo. So those who, who allowed the attack on Gustavo remain completely unpunished. So here you're urged to write to the national prosecutor of Chile to urge him to investigate the commanders who authorized the police to callously fire into the crowd of demonstrators. And, or you may write to Gustavo um, to encourage him, let him know you're thinking about him. And Amnesty also suggests if you can think of something tactile to send, like origami or braille letters, something to send to him directly, that might be a nice thing to do. Uh, so next case is in Colombia. Now, this person is fortunately not in, in prison. I mean, well, nor I guess Gustavo wasn't either, but um, Yanni Silva has dedicated her life to defending the trees and land in the Amazonian Pearl. It's a, a um, reserve in um, Putumayo. She co-founded the Association for the Integral and Sustainable Development of the Amazonian Pearl in 2008. Her work has placed her at odds with the oil company that operates in areas overlapping with the reserve. This company is responsible for poisoning the water sources of the local communities by causing at least two oil spills. So our men have followed Johnny and threatened her with death. Amid the COVID-19 pandemic, state protection has been reduced and assassinations have skyrocketed. So the, the amnesty here suggests that you write to the president of the Republic of Colombia to call for the protection of, of Johnny and her fellow land defenders. And you may write directly to them also and share your admiration for their efforts. The next case, you might have heard of this one. I think this one might have been covered in the news, maybe not, but 
So three teenagers, this is in Malta, but the, the three teenagers are um, shared a common goal that forced them to leave their homes in um, Guinea and, and um, in, in Africa to seek a better to seek better futures. They they met each other all in Libya, but they but they were desperate to escape the violence and torture selves, which were in the refugee camps and the migrant camps there. So in March of 2019, they boarded a dinghy with 111 others bound for Europe. The rubber boat soon ran into trouble and was rescued by the crew of an oil tanker. The crew decided to turn everyone back to Libya, but then a protest broke out. So the three teenagers were asked by the crew to use their language skills to calm the situation. The crew brought the ship to Malta where the authorities boarded the ship and charged the three teenagers with hijacking the oil tanker. They are now charged with offenses so serious they could be jailed for life despite little evidence or probably no evidence. So here you can write to the Attorney General of Malta to insist that they drop all these drop charges against all these teenagers who were underage and so their names have actually not been released. But you could also write messages of support and amnesty will get them to the them in Malta. Next one is in, in Myanmar. Here, um, Peng Fo Min is a, he's a member of the poetry troupe that fuse comedy and music. In the spring of 2019, Peng and six other members of his group were arrested after performing while dressed as soldiers. Their performance was a satire of the military and Peng was convicted and sentenced to six years in prison. So here the suggestion is to write to um, Myanmar state counselor and insist that she released Peng and the other members of the poetry troupe. And as I, I, a lot of you might know, she's actually, you know, was given this Nobel Peace Prize, but as, as a, the state counselor, she has not been supportive of human rights at all. Um, and you can also write to, to Peng and his family with messages of support. Now, this is from Pakistan. Um, Idris Katok has spent years documenting enforced disappearances under international for law. Um, and he's work, done work for Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch. But in a cruel twist, Idris too has now disappeared um, in November of, of 2019. With Amnesty's help, um, Idris's 20-year-old daughter, Talia, began fighting for her father's return. His family fears he could be charged with espionage. If convicted, he could be jailed for 14 years or even sentenced to death. So here, the, the request is to write to the Prime Minister of Pakistan to insist that Idris be released immediately or at least produce, that they need to produce some credible evidence that an internationally recognizable offense has been committed by him. Um, you may write letters of support to his daughters also. Um, so this next one is in Saudi Arabia. Um, you might, you probably have heard of her also. Um, Nasima Al-Sada has campaigned for women's rights in Saudi Arabia. She was one of several prominent activists campaigning for women to have the right to drive and carry out their daily lives without the permission of a male guardian. Nasima was arrested for her peaceful human rights work in July of 2018. She was placed in solitary confinement for at least a year and has, was not allowed access to a lawyer. Um, you may write to the king of, of Saudi Arabia to call for the release of Nasima and other human rights activists. And you may also write to her young son. I'm not sure how young he is, but I, I think he's quite young. And then there are just two more cases. This, this, this one is South Africa. Uh, Papi Kwabe, I'm not saying these right, and, and Bongeka. 
Pangula are were going out one Friday night in 2017 and they hailed a minibus taxi. They were never heard from again. Following a frantic search at hospitals and police stations, their relatives discovered the terrible truth that they had been killed and dumped by the side of a road. According to the families, the police failed to properly investigate these murders. So the, the request here is to write to the High Commissioner of South Africa and demand a fair and thorough investigation into their deaths. And you may also write a support, letters of support and hope to their families. And the last case is in Turkey. Um, from their first day at university, biology students, um, Malike Balkan and Osgur Gur dedicated themselves to defending the rights of lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, gender, and intersex people. In May 2019, they planned a pride march that the university did not approve. Police arrested at least 23 students, including Malike and Osgur, and an academic. Some of those detained hadn't even taken part in the protest. Despite simply exercising their right to a peaceful protest, 18 students and the academic are on trial. If found guilty, they face up to three years in prison. So in this case, you could write to the Minister of Justice and uh, you can also write letters of support to, to everyone in the group and Amnesty will forward them on. So what I'd like to do now, I will stop screen sharing just for a minute and then I will take you to another screen. Um, so I'll just stop share and then I will share again and pick, I think this is the right one. Okay. So what this, this screen is actually, if you look at the UC we, we see website, and there's a search bar up at the top. So I'm just going to, can everybody, can anybody see this? I'm just circling where the search bar is. Okay, I see Lynn nodding, good. So if you just type the word rights in there and hit enter, you will then see the page that I'm going to scroll down through. And the reason I'm suggesting this is just, this is the easiest way for you to get all the information you need to write the letters. Because I've loaded this information onto various pages and you can also just go to today's event page and the information's all there. But because once today's event is over, it may not be as easy to find because it'll become a past event, not a current event. So I thought this might be the simplest way to get people to get to the information on any day in the future. So just type rights in there and then this page will appear and it will say, you know, it'll, it'll talk about today's event, and then you scroll down a little bit and you'll see case one, right to the president of Algeria. And this was again, the journalists I've mentioned before. And what you can do with this, again, you're just right on the UCB website. So everybody should feel comfortable and safe about that. When you click on these links, they are linked to videos that Amnesty International has put up. So if you click on watch video right here, it'll actually take you to a YouTube video, but then you can just, you know, it may pop up in a new window or, but you just click the back arrow to get back to UCB's website. If you're on Twitter and you're logged in, you could literally just click here and it will send an, an, a tweet that's already been composed for you just with your handle. So Amnesty has done all this work. I've just been taking the information Amnesty gave and putting it into our website so it's easy for everybody to get to. Now I'm just gonna scroll down a little bit here and here it says option one. Now option one is to a way to, to uh, write a letter to the decision maker who in this case is like we said, the president of Algeria. So if you want to click here, you could download a case sheet which will give many more details than I said when I was just quickly trying to describe each case. So you, that'll be a PDF and you, you could use the facts in, the, in that PDF to, to compose your own letter. The salutation should be your excellency. And of course you would always start each letter with your name and address and then say your excellency. Here's a sample letter for you. And of course you write whatever you want but the letters don't have to be long, you just, like this is what about 
five, six sentences or so. Um, and then you say you're sincerely and you put your name. And if you are writing it, you would need $2.71 postage and you send it to this address in Algeria. But if you want, you can also just email it to this address here. And then you would CC this info at embassyalgeria.ca and that will actually send a CC to the Algerian ambassador in Ottawa. So this is by far the simplest way if you want to write your own letter. If you were to mail it though, you would photocopy it and then mail a copy to the ambassador in Ottawa by, and the address is here. Now option two is also to write to the president of Algeria, but this is a much simpler option. You just click here, like it says, and then you, you would be able to read and modify the sample letter that is shown above. This, this letter here is, is, has been loaded into this online letter writing tool. So you would basically click here and then you will be asked to enter your name, email, address and street address and your phone number is optional. Then you click send a letter and then you will be able to edit that sample letter and then go ahead and click send now. So that is by far the easiest way to write the most amount of letters, but you still have an option to personalize them a little bit. Um, but you know the addresses are right, you know the email's right, you don't have to worry about double checking your, <laughs> that. So I would highly, I mean, I plan to, if I don't write personal letters, at least do option two for all of them, because it's, it's pretty straightforward. Now, an additional thing you can do is to write directly to Khalid and encourage him to know you're thinking about him. In this case, I think the only option is to send it by mail. There is no email address for the prison. Now, I don't know if I need to go through more, but um, here, there, the, if you just keep scrolling down, you'll see every case and they're all the same where you get option one, download a case sheet, and then option two is clicking here and you, you get the online tool there. So um, I'm not sure if there's that much else to say. I mean, um, I think, yeah, I think I can, we can open it up for discussion, I believe. I can stop sharing my screen, I guess. And um, is that it then? I don't know how long did that take? It's 7.30 now. No, that was perfect. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, and thumbs up, says Michelle. Oh, good. <laughs> A reaction. Oh, yay. <laughs> and you know what? I noticed that um, earlier while you were speaking, Michelle went ahead and put a link in the chat. So oh, good. If, if people go to the chat, you'll be able to see that link to success stories. And if you click on it now, it's going to open a browser that you can look at later, right? It's going to open the, uh, the window for you so you can look further later at some of the success stories. <clears throat> and I would now welcome, um, and I, you know what, something's gone weird with my screen where I can't, uh, oh well. You, usually the participant list comes up right at the, uh, the far right and now mine's in the center covering everybody. But I welcome you. So how about comments in the chat or blue hands? Who's got, uh, who'd like to start? You know, we've got, it's a chance to ask Yvonne some questions, um, but also, you know, maybe offering your own experience if any of you have yeah, that's a kind of writing. Very good idea, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, anything holding you back? Uh, what do you think? Who wants to have, say something? Do you have a hand up, Michelle? Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought I saw a hand. Uh, you get, yeah, blue hand. Please go ahead. Yeah. Yes. Um, yes, I have a question actually because I, I do belong to MST and I receive regularly, you know, letters to send. So is it uh, so on December the 10th, around this time, are these 10 cases sort of specially chosen for this time of writing? Because I receive along the year letter to rise for different yes. um, different people. Yeah, so that's okay. That's yes. just the, what I wanted to know. 
Yeah, yeah. No, I think the concept is that they've selected these cases and they think that if these decision makers get so, so many letters, they're more likely to, to, to release them. Right. Okay. And so, you know, they, they are, but I agree. Some of these cases I've already written for, to be honest with you. Yeah, that's yes. right. Uh, the Saudi Arabia yeah. case. Okay. Right. Yeah. So, so this is a very specific time where maybe they will get more letters because it's Correct. more emphasized. Yeah. That, that's okay. The Got concept. it. That's the whole concept. If it's this global pressure is more likely. Yeah. To okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. We've got another new person, but she came later, I guess, Rosemary. Yeah, Rosemary, I'm glad to see you with us. Video it's... off, which is okay. And yeah. certainly if you'd like to make a comment in the chat or raise a blue hand, you know, with a question, that would be great. Who else, who else is gonna have something to say here? So, sorry, I got called away by a phone call. So I, I missed if there's something we can do this evening. Um, and yeah, I missed the particular instructions. Well, I mean, I suppose the easiest thing is if everybody wanted to look at the cases themselves and maybe why don't you click on, go to the UCB website, click on option two at least and see if you like doing that. <laughs> I mean, because... There's a, um, oh, Michelle just put in the chat, that's the link you would have to click on and do the search, <laughs> the automatic search there, that's good. And just to see if you have any questions about how to use that. Like, so if you wanna be writing the letters tomorrow, I, it, now's the time if you have questions to just look at that. Yeah, maybe I'll check with people too, cause early, you know, we were talking earlier about whether one thing Yvonne could do right now is walk people through access to the actual page on the website if you'd like to do that, if you'd like to have the experience of finding it and scrolling down yourself. She did it through share screen. But Mich how. Michelle just put the link in the chat. So if you go back to the chat, she's got the link right there. So ah, okay. She just did that. And so that's a search equal, the S equals rights means that it will do the same thing as typing it into the search box. Okay, but the, the still the the option, if people are trying it out, it's a chance to take a look. Sure, and actually sure. see the, the live page where you can scroll yourself up and down and it might lead to more questions too. Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, who had a hand? I saw someone else with a hand up a second ago. Melody, are you? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, there used to be, well, I think there still is with Amnesty, that they say it's quite a good idea <clears throat> to begin by saying who you are <clears throat> and describing yourself in some way. And right. then what I've always done, especially if I've <clears throat> visited the country, I say something very complimentary about the country mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and then sh show the, the contrast with letting some injustice happen when the country it doesn't really represent the true the people of the country or whatever um i don't know if that helps but it, it adds a little bit of a personal touch i think it's a good idea one thing i noticed and i don't know why the change was made but in previous years i've often the letters have often emphasized you're breaking this article of the un declaration of human mm -hmm. rights these letters none of the sample letters mentioned that there was much more straightforward like this is wrong, release them. Yeah. And I don't know why, I, I don't know if, and I don't really have anybody to ask, but I'm just saying I've noticed it's a change. And it could, I have to admit that there is a lot of hypocrisy, like, well, they're all part of the UN, so they're all supposed to follow this, this declaration, right? But obviously all countries are breaking it left and right, right? There's no, nobody is, is yeah. uh, so who's to say, you know, I'm mean, just saying maybe that technique hasn't been as effective as one would think it would be. So this is more like, we all know what you're doing and maybe that's it, as opposed to saying, oh, you broke this specific rule. I, I'm just saying, I noticed that to be a change in their sample letters, but I don't know where that came from, mm -hmm. but it is a change. Yeah. Catherine? Oh, you're you're muted, no? 
Oh, now yeah. you're muted. You need to unmute, Catherine. I thought I had, sorry, I did it twice. Um, because uh, Amnesty keeps lots of statistics, uh, like we hear in the, in the news that governments seem to be moving more and more to non-democratic, like around the world, it seems to be a trend. Is Amnesty noticing that there are more people being uh, incarcerated or um, uh, uh, bullied in, in other ways uh, as a result of that? Or is it too early to say? I, I don't know specifically, but I do recall seeing Alex now speak several times. He would come to Vancouver once a year and he just would always say, you know, we think we're making progress and things are just, it's just never ending. So I can't, I think that's the only way for me to look at it personally is like, we got to do what we can, but it's an ongoing thing. It, it's, it would be naive to think that, oh, we're going to fix this or something like that. I know it's sad to think, but I definitely don't think there's been any decrease. I think that's all I could say. There's no reason to believe that there's a decrease, but it's something that we need to keep the pressure up and just keep doing it because it, it's what we want to do. We, we feel is the right thing to do, I guess. Do you, Yvonne, do you ever see Canadians? Are we ever, do you ever see Canadians that need to be saved from human rights abuses. Well, I program. think it's interesting that none of the cases were were t you know the the Trans Mountain Pipeline. <laughs> none of them got a right for rights case. I admit they weren't in for years and years, but there was a Canadian case, and you know what it was? It was the Site C Dam. Do you remember that writing for the Site C Dam a couple of years ago? That was one of the Canadian cases. So you know, I. I it, 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 there is some criticism of amnesty being very, you know, pro-Western and they're acting like, oh, all these, these things are happening in other countries, but clearly there's abuses in North America, like I was saying, uh, the Albert Wood Fox, that case, and, and I'm sure in Canada, they just, I guess it's, it's a delicate balance. Amnesty was founded by a British law, lawyer almost 60 years ago, so it's got a you know, a, a British North American bent to it in that sense in, in, in its founding. So they're probably not highlighting the Western cases as much as they are other places, but at least they're trying here and there. I, I, that's all I can say. I'm really not an expert. I just felt that this wasn't something important to do. So I volunteered to do it years ago at, at you know, in, at UCB and I was glad I did it. Mm -hmm. It was hugely appreciated. Do you, do you remember any of the details of the Site C case? I mean, I'm curious about what yeah, the issue I, was. I, well, you, get, you probably wrote a letter too, and Hannah, I remember you were there. Do you recall? I, I, I think it was just saying that you're not supporting UNDRIP. I, I, from what I recall, it was, it was a, like you're, you're truly violating UNDRIP, yet you proclaim to be a human rights leader you know, and in fact, well, Canada, obviously it was, um, oh, geez, what's it, the melody will know. The name of the person who drafted it was a Canadian who, who wrote most of the declaration. Uh, mm. Somewhere I have a, his book. Uh, he was a, uh, definitely, and so they took great pride in this, the Canadian government took great pride in this, you know, declaration of human rights. Was it Stephen Lewis? No, we can go, Michelle, you can Google it. Who wrote the, <laughs> the Canadian author? Um, was it many years ago? Well, 1948 is when it was written and adopted it, by the- Was it Pearson? No, not Pearson. Hmm. Let's, any, this is, any other guesses before, yeah, this, before yeah. we find out? I'm sure we'll, we'll, the answer will show up soon, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, but but so I think that that was the key. It's just like it again. It was it was more of a, a shaming, I guess. Isn't that what the letter writing is about? It's about public pressure and public like we know what you're doing. So that what I'm saying what you're saying I, what you're saying I think is that it was about Site C, not a particular individual that had had their their human rights abused and were in jail or. Correct. Correct. It was about the fact that the the government is ignoring the pleas of the First Nation to not build this dam because they had clearly um, 
were against it, you know, just like the First Nations against the Trans Mountain Pipeline. It was a similar thing, but it was clearly Site C uh, because of the burial grounds, most likely. I, I guess there were probably more direct uh, facts there about the case that they could. Um, and I think the UN had investigated it too. There was a, uh, I think the UN had done some investigation into the Site C case. No luck yet, Michelle? <laughs> I'm not sure she's looking or not. Are you looking, Michelle? Are you looking for that name? Um, kind. Well, yeah, so you're just wondering what Canadian worked on the Declaration of Human Rights? Yeah, yeah, I, I actually what had is, a- I think it's probably Lester Pearson, but I will. Yeah. Oh, this guy- I just got his it. His arm- Humphrey wrote the oh. first draft of an international bill of rights that would eventually become the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Humphrey. 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 That's it. He, he lost his arm as a child. I remember reading it to the, I don't know, it was a children's book I had and whatever. Um, but, but what his position at the UN was, I don't recall. Was he, was he the- um, Let me just check. Ambassador to the, to the UN, I don't know. Anyway, uh, it, it, so it, it, that was how Canada, that was probably 2016, I believe, was the year that the, the Site C won. Um, yeah, last year, I, I don't recall the other years. I know I, um, anyway. Um, Yvonne, does, um, do, does Amnesty only deal with in individual cases or would they look at, say, a situation like the, the, the over-representation of indigenous uh, in pe um, pe men mostly, and, and well, and women in our prisons or the use of solitary confinement in our prisons. Yeah, no, I think they look at it in individual cases or oh. individual. Mm -hmm. that's my impression. Um, it's not that they don't document these, these abuses. I mean, like, well, th this friend that I had mentioned before, um, she'd actually gone to, it. she was in Israel actually, and, and um, looking at, you know, the treatment of Palestinians there. But this is many, many years ago. So I'm just saying that it could be a variety of things, you know, just like seeing how are people treated in prison, you know, from a, as a physician, you know, documenting, mm -hmm. you know, conditions, that sort of thing. So, mm -hmm. um, Catherine, did you have something? Yes, uh, it occurred to me that it would might be useful to know uh, sort of what the criteria are. For example, if we, like I'm very active in the, the anti-TMX thing and it's been quite noticeable and the last three people who were imprisoned were all indigenous and they were given 28 days as opposed to the, 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 uh, the, the anybody who's gone ahead of them has has had nothing like that stiff a stent sentence and uh, it, that looks that doesn't look very good um it would be interesting to know how to um approach amnesty to to ask that their their support or their opinion or whatever yeah yeah well I, they're I, unfortunately going to be sentenced again most likely i mean that was their first I mean, you know what I mean, that they've been charged with additional. Can I, I can give an update on that because I was at the court today. So um, so Jim and Stacey and Tawaham got 28 days, but so did Rita Wong. Um, so it was it was the too, David. Yeah, it, it was. I'm not sure he got so long, but it was the the people that was arrested the same week as week as I did. That was the standard mm -hmm. one. But today, Jim was um, convicted of, of um, from December the 4th or something from 2019. And I guess um, Stacy was as well. And they're looking at perhaps three months. Um, and clearly only Jim and Stacy were um, targeted when there were many other people there, some of whom who had been arrested before. So it was, it's pretty clear that that they, these indigenous men were being targeted, clear to us anyhow, um, and probably because in particular, Jim is watching them from the watch house and, and Stacy mm -hmm. too, so, so that's, yeah. 
Yeah, that's horrific. I didn't know, know that was today. Wow. So the sentencing won't be till March the 1st. So wow. the, I think they intend to appeal. Yeah, but three three months, you said, is what they were the, the prosecution's asking for? They, well, they, the sentencing hearing hasn't happened, but that's yeah. what they mentioned. Um, yeah. So. yeah. Wow. wow. Terrific. Yeah, well, well the I'm last... oh, sorry. Go ahead. Is it the same judge? Sorry. This is um, uh, Fitzpatrick. Uh, hmm. So you, Athlete retired, but Fitzpatrick is the one who also sent them to jail a um, couple of months ago. She's worse than Athlick. Just, yeah, really it's disrespectful. Hard to believe he could be worse than him, but yeah. Definitely. Well, no, David Goodrum, a lot of you might not know him, but he was also sentenced to 28 days. And he just got out of prison on uh, Monday, just two days ago. And he was... Um, well, he's a friend of ours that we know. I mean, he 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 was part of Michelle's UBC 350 group. <laughs> it was great <laughs> having him there. But um, yeah, I think that fortunately they get out after 18 days. I believe. I think Jim and Stacy also were released. I hope after 18 days. But Jim ended up in the hospital from spider bites. Mm -hmm. yeah, Jim Jim was appealing his sentence, so he got out early, but. Um, Stacy and Pavelham served 21 days. 21 days. Oh, I see. Interesting. Okay, so that is longer then, because David had 18 days, from what I understand. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why they were kept the extra couple of days. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I get there is an amnesty Vancouver office, and, you know, maybe I'll just send them an email or call them and say, are you... Mm -hmm. following these cases i it wouldn't yet yeah, yeah I, I, sh I will do that yeah i will do that yeah so what is amnesty doing anything with all these um these um death in the states this uh um put to death on skit on the death row there is a flu of um you know, quick killing everyone at this point um, by the administration. And uh, so I was wondering, because I know that some of the cases, I mean, at least on, you know, of one of them that was not even, that the prosecutor that actually prosecuted him in the first place 40 years ago, now is saying he shouldn't be put to death because he was not guilty actually. You know, there are a lot of groups that are fighting against the death penalty. And one of the ones I know about is called Witness to Innocence, because I don't know the exact number, but it's been well known that the majority of people are, are not guilty that are on death row. I mean, so there are so many innocent yep. people that are murdered. So I don't know that Amnesty's focused in that area because there are so many other groups that are, you know, trying to change state law. Okay. Yeah. The state has a different law depending on whether or not the death penalty is allowed. And that the governor, when they take office, like in California, Governor Newsom immediately said, no more, no executions okay. while I'm sure. So it, it really, the government governor can also grant, you know, clemency too. So it's the states are very individual with respect to the death penalty. Um, so I, I don't think amnesty is that involved with it. But there's but, lots of imprisonment as well. Sorry, say that again? There is a lot of imprisonment as well. Yes. Putting, yes. You know, putting yes. people to jail that, Correct. you know, they, they are in jail for, for life without um, being actually guilty yeah well, especially well, the, if they're black correct correct and well in the case of albert woodfox that i put in the success story mm -hmm. it was clearly you know abuse of you know solitary confinement as melody <coughs> so much about is is inhuman treatment and so that's amnesty was involved with that case for many many years and i remember writing more than once mm -hmm. for that case and then there's the the case of um, oh, why can't I not think of him? He he had been running on the ticket. Michelle, you know who I mean, probably. Um, um, Holtier. 
Yeah, Leonard, Leonard Peltier. Yeah, right. So. Oh yeah, right. That was yeah. another amnesty case. Again, wrong. I mean, obvious abuse of you know some somebody with a life sentence. I was thinking of another case that I'd like to mention, and I, I just I mean I think it should be um, dealt with. And uh, and some of you may have read about it. Uh, a young black woman who was a permanent resident in the states voted and she technically wasn't allowed to vote her situation was that her mother had been encouraging her mother had been begging her to vote saying now you're in this free country you have the right to vote you should vote wow. and so she voted and in good faith uh, a couple of young kids she's been sent to jail like for five years in hmm. the United States of America. And I think of that, like it really had an impact on me that is just so mm -hmm. unjust, it's outrageous. Um, wow, wow. No, I haven't heard of that. That's unusual though, in the sense that usually you have to register to vote and you can only register if you provide some proof. So she- She, she showed up to vote mm -hmm. and was arrested. Oh. Yeah. I, I heard about that. Yeah, that's a yeah. Sad thing. Yeah. She, it turned out she wasn't eligible to vote and she was trying to. Hmm. But she was in a free country and could finally vote. Yeah. <laughs> and her mother. Oh dear. Anyway. That's horrible. There's a lot of injustice in this world. Mm -hmm. Close to us too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So Oh, and Michelle, you just posted several things here, and Cindy also posted. Okay, oh, I see. Should we read it? Cindy said this is, or Cindy, do you I want to speak instead of us reading it out here? Do you want to have your voice? I can't tell where you are right now. No, microphone's off, but she's, yeah, she's written how much she's appreciated this. The first time I learned about Right for Rights. And so impressed at what a great tool it is and how easy and huge thanks to Yvonne for bringing it to our attention. And it is important work. And to acknowledge all the work, you know, everything you see now on the uh, UCV website <clears throat> was put together by Yvonne. She just went ahead on her own to get all the information together, put it up there so that we've got immediate access to it. Yeah, phenomenal. You can maybe email other people and say, guess what? It's all there. <laughs> you know, so yes. Yeah. Well, we're still yep. thinking about that. How, you know, it's so good that these are recorded. It's great that that information is there. Mm -hmm. It should be valuable. We have to think more about how we can use these evenings to, you know, reach more broadly for sure. I wonder if, um, uh, if well, maybe it's not the role of the minister, but I was thinking an email from the minister to all the congregation mm. tonight or tomorrow morning to say, do you know this is right for rights? And uh, um, go to the website. It's very easy to do. At least send one email. You know, it would be... Mm. Would that, well, how would yeah. that go down? I mean, I know she's really advocating for all kinds of uh, um, causes, so... Yeah, the, um, you know what I wonder, Melody, like where would she, I think that would be like UCV chat and the other, you know, we, we sent out a reminder about this evening a few days ago, I, I could certainly send out a follow up to those lists. Mm. And for those of you who missed it, this is still here, I could certainly do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and what I'm noticing, so we're coming up to our last minute before eight o'clock. And um, which makes it time actually to thank Yvonne hugely for all this work on the presentation, mm -hmm. how appreciated it is. Thank you so much, Melody, for coming forward to do the introductions. Mm -hmm. And next week, next uh, Wednesday evening, same place, same uh, tiny URL, is the, we're doing instead of a presentation, uh, it's a R and r for activists evening. Uh, there'll be music and poetry and some, you know, a circle sharing, and we'd welcome you there. What we do right at eight o'clock is take a two minute break. And so right now we're going to take two minutes. People are free to, you know, um, take a little break, stretch, 
Um, those who want to sign off from the call are, are welcome to do so. We, we initially build it as a one hour event. Some people like to leave after the hour. But anyone who wants to come back in two minutes for any further chat and discussion is welcome. Okay, two minutes.